This lesson deals with writing note equations by inspection. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 3 starting on page 4. Let's consider an example that has only resistances and only current sources in it. What I'm going to do here is number all the nodes. So here's a node, here's a node, here's a node, and here's a node. I'll pick this as my reference node, we we'll also call that ground, and I'll label this as 1, 2, and 3. It gives me three unknown node voltages, and so I'm going to apply Kirchhoff's current law to these three nodes to get three independent equations to then solve for V1, V2, and V3. Suppose that I assign directions of current such that current sources enter the node and that the current that leaves the node is the current in the resistances. And this is shown on the next page. That's a perfectly valid first step. Well, let's apply Kirchhoff's current law to node one and let's sum the currents. The currents that enter the node then are the currents that leave the node. Now, since this current source is pointing this way, for the current to go this way would be minus I2. So I1 plus a minus I2 is entering node one. And what's leaving node one is the current and the resistance R1 which is V1 divided by R1. And then the current in the resistance R2 is node voltage one minus node voltage two divided by the resistance R2. And then lastly, the current in R6 is V1 minus V2 divided by R6. And that's this first equation right here. And just to make the algebra a little bit easier to do, let me take the reciprocal of R as G. So I've got G1 times V1 and then I've got G2 times V1, G2 times minus V2, G6 times V1, and then G6 times minus V2. Let's group all the things that multiply V1, V2, and V3. So G1 multiplies V1, G2, and G6. Now all the things that multiply V2 actually have a minus sign in it. So here's G2 and here's G6. The sum of those two with a minus sign in front. And then lastly, there's nothing times V3. Now in this problem, we're assuming that the resistances are known and the current sources are known, and we're gonna solve for these three node voltages. And if we know those three node voltages, we can solve for any voltage or any current in our circuit. And now let's take a look at node two. And let's do the same thing. Let's assign currents that are entering a node as only the currents from current sources, and the currents that leave the node will be the currents and the resistances. Now normally we wouldn't bother to do this because we've already defined a direction for the current in R2 and R6. But if we do this, there's an interesting pattern that emerges. And we're gonna use that pattern to set up an inspection algorithm. Again, I'm gonna assign currents leaving the node for all of the resistances, and then the current sources will enter the node. Whatever enters the node has to equal whatever leaves the node by Kirchhoff's current law. So let's do the same thing then. So current I2 is entering. And now the current that's leaving is the current in this resistance, which is going to be now V2 minus V1 divided by R2 or times G2. The current in this resistance is also going to be V2 minus V1 divided by R6 or times G6. The current in R4 is V2 minus V3 divided by R4 times G4. And then lastly, the current in here is just really just V2 divided by R3 or times G3. Here's our second equation, the three unknowns, V1, V2, and V3. And again, let's group together the things that multiply V1, V2, and V3. This time, the things that multiply V1 have a minus sign in front of it. And it's just right here. It's G2 plus G6. The things that multiply V2 are G2, G6, G4, and then G3. So it's showing up over here. And lastly, the things that multiply V3 now is just minus G4. Again, let's do this one more time at node three. Again, we wouldn't normally do this redefinition of current flow. Let's see what happens when we do do it. Now we have no current sources entering node three. So we'll have zero on the left-hand side of the equation. And now the currents that leave the node will just be the currents and the resistances. And so again, with this direction of current, we're applying by Ohm's law that this is the plus and the minus terminal. So it's gonna be V3 minus V2 divided by R4 or times G4. And then the current in here is just simply V3 times G5. Let's group together all the things that multiply V1, V2, and V3. Now, there's nothing here with a V1 in it. Things that multiply V2 is just minus G4, and the things that multiply V3 are gonna be uh, four plus five. Take those equations, and just group them all together. That's at the top of page seven. Equations in this form are sometimes awkward to work with, and so we have a shorthand notation called a matrix. So here's our first equation that says that I1 minus I2 
is equal to G1 plus G2 plus G6 times V1 minus the quantity G2 plus G6 times V2 plus zero times V3. Second equation, I2 is equal to minus the quantity G2 plus G6 times V1 plus G2 plus G3 plus G4 plus G6 times V2 and then minus G4 times V3. And that's our second equation. And lastly, zero is equal to zero times V1 minus G4 times V2 and then G4 plus G5 times V3. So this is just a shorthand notation for these equations at the top of the page. We can also talk about a general matrix form where I have entries in each of the rows and columns. Now here's a row, here's another row, here's another row, and then there's columns here, here, and here, and likewise there's a column here. The notation we're going to be using for our matrix is two numbers, and the first one is going to represent the row and the second the column. Here is row one, column one, row one, column two, row one, column three, row two, column three, row three, column one. We use a G here because the unit on the entry is equal to one over ohms or mohs. Now in this column, we just have the summation of the currents that we're entering the node. We're going to call that J1, J2, and J3. And then lastly, here are unknowns V1, V2, and V3. Let's take a look at the equations that we formed, this matrix notation, and compare it back to the schematic that we started with. First thing I might want to note here is that the matrix is symmetric. This entry here is the same as this entry, and this is row 1, column 2, and this is row 2, column 1. Row 1, column 3, row 3, column 1. Row 2, column 3, row 3, column 2. Also notice that all the diagonal entries are positive, and all the off-diagonal entries are negative or zero. The diagonal entries are actually the resistances that were hooked up to node 1. We had R1, R2, and R6. What was hooked up to node 2 was R2, R3, R4, and R6. What was hooked up to node 3 was R4 and R5. Now what's hooked up between nodes 1 and 2 were actually the resistors R2 and R6. What was hooked up between nodes 2 and node 3 was the resistor R4. Well, the question is, is it just a coincidence? Let's go back and look at how we wrote those equations back on page 5. Because I picked the current leaving the node that we were writing at, it's going to force the plus sign, that node, to have the current leave. So that gave us, in each case here, a positive V1 times the conductance. The things that were between nodes 1 and 2 would always have a minus sign associated with them because of how we defined the current, likewise over here. And so they show up as the second entry, always with a minus sign. Of course, the other currents entering a node is positive, and so if this one's leaving the node, you get negative. So you can explain also the left-hand side of the equation, just as we set it up. And this is true at every node when we form the equations. So this wasn't a coincidence. This was just simply how we set the problem up. But the steps that we did here by assigning the currents are perfectly valid. Again, we might not normally pick it that way, but if you do, there's a pattern that emerges. Let's take a look at page 9. We could then write an algorithm for how to write circuit equations, not by doing Kirchhoff's laws, but by simply writing down the entries. So what I need is an end node circuit composed only of resistances and independent current sources. And then I'll do the following things. I'll select one node and label it as ground or node zero. And then I'm going to label all the remaining nodes one through n minus one. The left-hand side of the equation will be what's called a column vector, and it'll contain entries in each row corresponding to that node in the circuit with the current sources entering that node. Our matrix will have n minus one rows and n minus one columns, and the diagonal elements will be the sum of the conductances that are hooked up to that ith node. In other words, one, one, two, two, and three, three. And then the off diagonal terms will have a subscript that will not be identical. In other words, these are the, the diagonal entries. And they'll all be a summation with a minus sign in front. And these will be all the conductances that are between nodes i and j. And lastly, now we can have a shorthand notation for our matrix, where the left-hand side of the equation is the summation of our currents entering the nodes, our conductance matrix, and then the unknown node voltages, where the entries here will be called a column vector, where I've got n minus 1 rows, 
and these correspond to the node voltages 1 through n minus 1. Let's do an example. Pick one node here as, as reference or ground. That's my first step. And I'm going to label all the remaining nodes. Here's, there's a node here, a node here, and a node here. I'm going to set up a blank 3x3 three three matrix. I'm going to fill in these entries with our algorithm. And then likewise, a blank column vector here that has three rows in one column. And then these are my three unknowns, V1, V2, and V3. We go to node 1 here. We're going to sum the conductances. So it's going to be 1 half plus 1 quarter plus 1 quarter plus 1 half. What's between nodes 1 and 2 will go in row 1, column 2, and that's going to be 1 quarter and 1 quarter summed and then negated. And what's between nodes 1 and 3 is just this 2 ohm resistor, so a minus 1 half. The current sources that are entering the node here are going to be this current here, which is minus 3, and then this current here, which is all going into this node. And that's my first equation. And let's go to the second node. Let's erase this. Second note here, I've got one, two, three, four resistances. So let's go put that in row two, column two. One quarter plus one quarter plus one over one plus one over one. Now what's between nodes two and one is still the same thing. We could write it again or just simply copy the entry back down over here. But it's kind of a way to check to see if you did the math right. So one quarter plus one quarter negated. Between nodes two and three, I have two elements hooked up. So one over one plus one over one negated. Now, there aren't any current sources entering here, so I've got a zero. Then lastly, let's take a look at node three here. I've got this current entering. And of course, I've got this current entering, so I've got minus two plus four over here. And then let's sum the conductances at this node. So I've got one half, one over one, one over one, another one over one, which should just be one. Between nodes three and two, I just have two resistances. So one over one plus one over one minus and lastly, between node 3 and 1, I just have this 2 ohm resistor. And these are my equations characterizing this circuit. If there was nothing between two nodes, you get a zero for an entry. We saw that in the original problem. Now, if we add up all the terms here, these are the entries that we get in row 1, column 1, row 1, column 2, and so on. I want to solve for these three unknowns, and there's a couple different ways of doing that. One's called Kramer's Rule, another one's called Gaussian Elimination. We'll take a look at these techniques in the next video. And this is how you write equations by inspection for circuits that contain only current sources and resistances.